let's just stick with Man City for a little bit because Jack Grealish has been coming in for a lot of stick over the last week. I've been listening in and uh, a lot of people saying Grealish just isn't doing it. Well, he scored today. He got the opener. Um, I'd have fancied myself to score that, actually. The De Bruyne cross was absolutely perfect. And there were, yeah, I thought Grealish was OK today. There was a lot of people saying he played well. I don't think for £100 million, Jack Grealish played well today. I think I don't think Kevin De Bruyne played well today. He just did enough. Playing well is grabbing a game like that and, you know, getting a couple of goals, getting a couple of assists. Is Jack Grealish fulfilling the 100 million price tag at Manchester City? And are we now at a point where if he just plays 70 minutes and does OK, that's classed as good enough? I'm a massive fan of Jack Grealish. He should be in the England squad. He's one of the first players that uh, I think should be uh, you know, looking back to the Euros. I wanted him to start. I thought at Aston Villa, he was a, a big fish in a small pond and, and he excelled and he got hold of games and he was doing that. Uh, I'd watch G Jack Grealish play for Aston Villa against decent Premier League sides and they knew he was the danger man and he'd still have a good game. He's now a small fish in a big pond at Manchester City, and I don't see the same Jack Grealish. Um, when Pep Guardiola bought Jack Grealish, I was very intrigued by that because I respect Pep Guardiola. He's, he's one off, if not the best manager in the world. And when he wants to spend £100 million on an English player who I really rate, I'm like, wow, I can't wait to see how this is going to work and how, how it's going to develop. Ultimately, I'm a bit disappointed. Um, as a United fan, I'm quite happy because I don't think Jack Grealish has, has set the world on fire at Manchester City. But is this just the problem sometimes? You look at what Pep Guardiola's done at Man City and it's fantastic, but we're going to talk about Calvin Phillips in a little bit. Obviously, the money's fantastic. You're going to win a league title. Jack Grealish has got a Premier League winner's medal that he probably wouldn't have got if he'd stayed at Villa for the rest of his career. But I'm not lost in what he's doing at Man City. I, I definitely would pick him for England. I, I know he's not playing that much for Man City, but I, I think it's a big season for Grealish. And I, I expected more, um, to be honest with you, that with, with Sterling moving off and they don't have a massive amount of options on the wide. Uh, I mean, Foden can play there. Mares can play there. Um, I think it's a big season for Grealish. And look, we're only just at the start of it. He did do reasonably well today, but reasonably well is not enough for Jack Grealish and £100 million. Pounds. He, he's got to be grabbing hold of games. And I think that... Sometimes we're a bit reluctant to call it how it is. You can't just say, oh, he did quite well today, leave him alone. He's got to grab those games. Wolves had 10 men. He's got to grab hold of those games. If Kevin De Bruyne leaves, Jack Grealish should be becoming, this, becoming the star of that team. Do, do Man City fans feel like Jack Grealish is going to become the Kevin De Bruyne of that team? Because I, I, don't, I don't think it is. And in no way am I criticising the player. I really like the player. And I, I, I'd rather he started for England over certain other players. And as I said, Aston Villa... He was probably one of my favourite players outside of, of Manchester United. But I don't think it, uh, at the moment at Man City, just I don't I don't feel he's the same player. I don't think he's got the same freedom. And I think that he, he needs to do more. I do. I think he needs to do more. That's my opinion. Uh, I don't know what anybody else feels about that. Um, we've uh, we've got a text from Gunnar Aaron who says, I keep hearing Rogers didn't spend any money. If you look at the squad of players he has, uh, what they co would cost in the market, how much money did Bournemouth spend? I, I think in relation to Leicester, it's more about what they've lost. Um, he didn't; They didn't have any money in the summer and, and Brendan Rodgers has been very open about that. And, and in fact, the chairman of Leicester has been very open that in the programme notes a few weeks ago. Um, uh, you can say he hasn't had a lot of money to spend, but I don't necessarily think, I think it's the players they've lost. I think it's the disruption they've had. They've not replaced Kasper Michael. They've not replaced Fafana. So they've actually ended up uh, losing players, which I think is is, is a problem for them. Um, text from Ollie. He says, is the bubble starting to burst on Eddie Howe? Another poor result, but he never seems to get any criticism. Well, I was checking Newcastle just before we, we, we started the show. Mid-table now. Um, next four games are, I believe you've got Fulham away. Um, I think I wrote it down, actually. Fulham away. Yeah, Brentford at home, Manchester United away, Everton at home. I think that those four games are pivotal for Eddie Howe and Newcastle. Uh, Newcastle seem to have taken quite a, a mature approach. They, they're they very rich. They could have approached the summer differently. They could have approached their manager differently back when they appointed Eddie Howe. They seem to want to steadily grow that club into well, they will want to win Champions Leagues and Premier Leagues, let's be honest, at some point in the future. But um, 
I also think that there is a there's a, a trajectory and, a, and a, pra- a path that they want to follow, and Eddie Howe needs to be following that. And I think if they don't start picking up the wins in the next four games, Eddie Howe could be in it could be in uh, problems. I think Newcastle will be patient, but I think if they give him an excuse to to move him on, then they probably will do. But I don't think we're at that stage yet. Um, I was impressed with Newcastle when they played Man City. I, they're, they're very much a work in progress. And I think this season, if they can get anywhere near the top eight, that would still be progress for Newcastle. But there were boos. There were some boos after the game today. And I suppose it's a difficult one, isn't it? We embrace and celebrate the brilliance of this Premier League season so far, where, I mean, look at Fulham last night, three goals in from one nil down away from home. Bournemouth did it there. Um, but the New, uh, Newcastle getting a draw against Man City, Fulham drawing with Liverpool on the opening weekend. We all go, what a great Premier League season it is so far and we hope it can last. And then you draw at home to Bournemouth and you're booing, saying we should be beating that sort of team. So you can't have it both ways. It's a competitive league or it's not a competitive league. And I don't think Newcastle fans can boo because you drew to Bournemouth. Maybe the performances haven't been great. Maybe that's what it's all about. But I, for one, think it's fantastic what Bournemouth are doing. And I would question why Bournemouth aren't giving uh, uh, Mr O'Neill the, the manager's job there. Um, We've got a call from Richard. He says Grealish isn't performing to the 100 million price tag. Uh, Richard, uh, what what you got to say on Grealish? No, I I actually think um, I think you're right. Uh, I think it's been it's been a disappointment for both for City and also for England a little bit. Um, But the the thing that occurred to to me was last season um, it was really close between City and Liverpool. um, Really, literally last 20 minutes, wasn't it? Really. Um, Now I think had City this time last year had they spent the money on Harry Kane. Um, I think they'd probably have won the um, Premier League more comfortably last year because Harry Kane will always get you goals and more importantly, he'll always get you penalties, you know? And those penalties might amount up to sort of, you know, five or ten goals over a season. Um, And, uh, you know, I I, I, I think they made the wrong decision last year. Um, And uh, I I think he's got a lot of... I think he's, he's... He's obviously a talented boy, you know, uh, there's no question about that. But I I think looking back, um, City could have spent that money better. Yeah, it's interesting, Richard, because obviously that £100 million they spent on Grealish, you're quite right. They They were looking at Harry Kane and it seemed like maybe the Harry Kane deal couldn't have been done. Spurs are difficult to deal with, but... You know, I what what do you think of Grealish though? Do you think there's a good player there? Do you think he's he's been over promoted at a club like Man City? I mean, I mean, I I do rate Grealish, but do you just think he's he's not that level of player? Um, I think he's got great potential, and I, and I think he's. Um, we always get really excited don't we, when we think we when we think we found a good dribbler, and he you know there's no doubt about it. He did look really good for Villa. Uh, 